Hi there, me again, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So right now, um, in five minutes time, the first Wordy Wednesday video is uploading, and I'm now doing the second one. Um, I'm going to sort of step back a bit from some of the more uh, involved topics uh, than what we have been discussing. We're going to kind of go back to why does rehab have to look like rehab? Because be it aphasia, be it expressive, be it receptive, be it global, be it anomia, you're going to therapy all the time. Uh, so why does therapy have to look like therapy? Why do you have to do a formal piece of homework uh, in order to get benefit? Because I've been to physiotherapy where I had homework. Uh, I've been to occupational therapy. Not so much homework there, but just living is occupational therapy. I went to speech and language therapy, which had homework. Um, I'm currently in therapy therapy, which has a ton of homework. So why do you have to do a formal structured thing to get benefit? You don't. And in this case, we're going to go back to thinking inside the box in a way. This time we're thinking Lego. Yep, not sponsored. Totally not sponsored. Um, I bought this with my own money. It's not a review. It's just I bought Lego. So you're thinking, well, why did you buy Lego? Well, one, there's a defined end result. In this case, a police plane with the police person and the ne'er-do-well with the ne'er-do-well crowbar. Um, so the advantage to Lego <clears throat> is in every Lego set, you get a box, and the box has pictures, right? And then you get the Book of Destructions. And the Destructions, they're, they're labeled. In this case, it starts at step one. And this has Whole bunch of steps. Uh, the plane itself stops stops at step 18, right? and then it shows you how to do some other things. But the great thing is, no words, right? So in this case, on page 19, step 14, it identifies how to put the parts on, what the parts look like. So you can go through the bags of parts that come with these and you can find the little pieces, be it the gray piece, which is here, or the yellow piece, which is there, and then you put it on the wing. And that in and of itself is a therapeutic activity because I have to be able to say, I'm going to get the gray piece, then I'm going to get the yellow piece, then I'm going to put it on the blue wing right there. So even if you have difficulty getting your message out verbally, follow the, follow the instructions. Um, for people that have uh, receptive aphasia, meaning you have difficulty getting the message in, again, you just have to follow the instructions. Right? And the great thing is, you don't have to get the Lego I got. Um, if you want to go out with partner approval, of course, uh, I'm about a foot-ish taller than my girlfriend, and I weigh her by about a buck twenty, but she scares me. Like, I spent maybe twenty bucks on this, and the box of Lego that I wanted was like fifty bucks, because it was a fire truck, and I really wanted a fire truck, um, but she scares me. So with partner approval, go buy the Lego. Or a puzzle, or a model, or whatever, right? I just picked Lego because... It's common. Right? Uh, there are many species of the Legos. Batman Lego, Spider-Man Lego, Mandalorian Lego, Star Wars Lego, City Lego, whatever. Right. So by using, again, Lego as a therapeutic home activity, you can do therapy and you can do it piece by piece. Oh, title of the video. Um, so yeah, you, again, you're... you're you're going to do your therapy piece by piece. In this case, it's Lego piece after Lego piece. And if you choose to go and get one of the 600-piece Lego sets, 
so be it, right? You're going to have some fun with it. If you happen to have children, be it children of your own or grandchildren or niece or nephews, maybe you can build it with them and then donate it to them. So you get some benefit out of it um, and then you give it to them as a gift. Uh, you know, or maybe you've always wanted to build a train set. So you build a massive Lego train set. Uh, no, that's not a plan. So anybody that knows me, you can scratch that off the list. I do not wish to do that. <clears throat> so again, again, we've had a couple of videos lately that have been, that have been pretty heavy. So I just wanted to sort of take it back a notch to why does therapy have to look like therapy? Because it doesn't, right? And, and again, we get back into very simple, basic things where you're doing some basic color matching, you're doing shape matching, you're following simple order of operations, you, you get something out of it, right? You can tell where you're going wrong. Like all of a sudden, if this doesn't look like what it's supposed to, you're going to know immediately, right? So you get into the routine and the habit of reading directions, following directions, and having a known outcome because, yeah, no, a known outcome. Like you already know what it's going to look like because it's on the box, buddy. See, it's on the box right there. See? So I know you can fly better than it. I know. So you end up in a position where you know the outcome of what it should be. So you don't have to second guess yourself. And if you have to practice it to get it right over and over and over again, so be it. It's just Lego. No one's going to get hurt. You're doing it in the safety of your own home. It'll For those of you that have the ability and you need to work on your fine motor, well, just building this little piece here, well, you will end up working on your fine motor skills, right? So a lot of people get hung up. And I see this on... Um, the Facebook group at times. People get hung up. Um, and someone asked me a question, what medication was I on? Actually, let me find that comment on my YouTube channel. Uh, uh, Nana 1983. You left a comment, hey, you just like to know what medicines I was on at that stage. So that video was the which video? Two months since my stroke. Okay, um, I'll be honest. In regards to the speech deficits, there's no medication that was going to help me. It was simply practice, 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 and practice. So the medications I was on at that point, I would have been on a statin. Uh, I was on, um, Prendipril. I was on a statin medication. I forget which one. I know that has changed. Um, and I was on, um, stomach medication because the one medication was causing heartburn. So I was, I was basically on blood pressure and cholesterol medication with like Pepto-Bismol thrown in because I was getting wicked heartburn. That was the medication I was on at two months after my stroke. So... People get hung up, and I see this on the Facebook groups all the time, like, well, how can I get better? I'm going to be honest. Practice. Go do. Right? Get up off the couch, get away from the keyboard, and go do. Like, that's the only way things have the potential of getting better. How much, how much will be the level of your better? I don't know. And in some cases, even the doctors won't know. Again, you're going to get, we're going to go back to that really expensive, highly educated medical guess, right? They're looking at benchmarks, uh, benchmarks that they've seen in their own practice or from symposiums and, and, and conferences they've gone to or case studies, you know, um, and, and things they've been involved in, right? So in some cases, what your neurologist is going to say or your speech pathologist is going to say, um, they're benchmarks. They're things they've seen done. Um, I still struggle with aphasia. Um, I went out to do some shopping today in Walmart, and I went on my own for about 90 minutes. And that's the first time I've been in that store on my own 
in over six months. And by the end of the excursion, um, I, the aphasia was starting to come out and I was having some anomia problems. So I still do situationally and episodically struggle with anomia, with aphasia, uh, sometimes when I get really worked up, apraxia. And, and that's probably going to be a constant companion. Like, I'm going to be honest. Uh, and I'm, I, I'm prepared to accept that. So there are times whereby I may make this look easy. And I'm just going to say that. Because you find people out in the internet worlds, you only see me for 10 to 15 minutes at a time. You may not get to see, you know, the three times when I go to start to make the video and it goes sideways. So, and I don't ever upload those. One day I might do like a, a bloopers reel for fun. Um, but when it comes to aphasia, when it comes to anomia, when it comes to verbal apraxia or apraxia of speech, be it receptive of aphasia, be it expressive aphasia, um, even global aphasia, it's practice. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be able to tell you every single strategy will work for every single person in every single situation. Um, what, what may have worked or did work for me may or may not work for you. But the ultimate thing is, is you've got to just try. And when you're at home, right, make it fun. Like the video I did about, you know, think inside the lines, coloring books, the video I did about think inside the box, playing games. In that case, it was Ticket to Ride. In this case, do it piece by piece with Lego or puzzles, right? Because, again, you've got order of operations. You've got color matching. You've got a box and uh, the book of destructions that tells you what it's supposed to look like. So if things go sideways, you'll kind of know. And... Things like this can help prepare you for um, getting ready to go back to work, getting ready to do anything because you're you're taking. It's a very formal process to have to sort of build this, right? It's but it's informal, right? It's not you're not doing it with a therapist, you're not doing it with a speech and language, you're not doing it in an office. It took me ten minutes to build that at my kitchen table. And now I've got a memento of buying Lego for you fine people. But on that note, if you have aphasia, <clears throat> if you have anomia um, or verbal apraxia, you just have to accept a few simple things. You can only control it so much because it's your brain misfiring, right? And this, this is going to sound like an oversimplification, because it is. It is what it is. You can't change it. Just accept it. Right? Embrace it. It's now you. There's nothing you can do about it. <clears throat> you can control how you respond and you react to it, but you can't control it. So have fun with it. right? And if you have to, do your rehab piece by piece. That's going to be the title of the video. So on that note, I'm going to sum everything up. If you happen to be like what we've been watching, I think right now I'm at 195 subscribers, and thank you to everyone that's taken the time to join. Um, if you know someone that's dealing with a communication deficit or disability after a stroke or a brain injury, please point the channel out to them, especially Wordy Wednesdays. They might get some benefit out of that. If you happen to know someone that's going through the recovery of a brain injury or a stroke uh, or someone who's supporting someone going through the, um, the recovery of a brain injury or stroke, again, please point the channel out to them. Like, share, and subscribe. And if you happen to see <clears throat> either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who uh, someone who appears to be uh, immediately befuddled, confused, or has lost their sense of balance, someone has vision problems. They see in grayscale. They only see a little dot in the world. They can't move their eyes in a certain direction. Someone has facial droop. There's a noticeable visual slackening of the facial muscles. Uh, someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate language for situation or context. Uh, if you cannot understand speech, um, general body weakness, 
weakness on one side or the inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.